Welcome everyone. I'm going to talk today a little bit about why storage management standards matter in some complex virtualized environments and some very large scale environments. I'm Rochelle Alvers. I'm the Vice Chair of the SNEA Board of Directors, as well as the Chair of the Storage Management Initiative. I also lead the Scalable Storage Management Technical Workgroup within SNEA, and I work with several other industry standards groups as well, including the uh, DMTF Redfish Forum. Uh, I work partner with the uh, NDM Express organization and work with the Open Fabrics Alliance as well as the uh, Universal Chiplet Group, uh, all working on various areas of manageability. Um, we're going to talk today about some of the challenges and other, some other areas of concern related to manageability. Um, in particular, let's look at, you know, some of the areas of concern and, you know, what, what are some of the issues related to, to manageability, some of the new technologies. So, you know, cloud storage providers, really, and anyone developing enterprise data centers, large-scale environments today have an unprecedented array of new technologies to look at and to choose from, really, in building their next-generation environments. A lot of environments to and products to, to to work with to integrate their existing infrastructures because nobody's going to throw those away. Um, and how do you take those and expand and bring in new ecosystems, um, new products, and weave those together with all of these great new technologies? Those new technologies present more possible permutations to work with and enable all of these great opportunities for optimization. So adding additional virtualization and acceleration technologies presents more flexibility, more options, and more capabilities to present that, to build that custom configuration. But doing so increases those management challenges exponentially. With the proliferation of all these different technologies and multiple vendors, standards-based management is more critical than ever to successfully develop, integrate, deploy, and manage systems and storage at scale. So what we're gonna to do today is talk about what some of these latest technologies and storage are, some of those existing technologies and things that have been around for a long time but are now really becoming uh, practical and deployable for you, um, really in virtualization, some of the new technologies and acceleration and, and also in fabrics. Who's really working on these things and who's really starting to deliver that standards-based management, what those things look like and, and how they're working together. And also, what are some of the open source projects that are delivering some value add using standards-based management? So let's jump in. First, where is your data? We've been hearing for a lot of years, and we've been seeing in the last few years as well, multi-cloud. And we've been talking about public cloud and then private cloud. Um, but what we're really seeing now is a lot more capability around multi-cloud deployment options. Well, isn't that great? There's a lot of opportunity to just have everything out in the cloud and also, these hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, all of these great capabilities um, to have your cloud and everything put, just everything in the cloud. Hmm, well that sounds great. Single sourcing options or just dual sourcing options and everything's all taken care of for you. Well, not so fast. Hmm, we have now forgotten, maybe in that scenario, we kind of forgot about all of our edge devices. We now have all of the devices that you can think about being maybe, hmm, maybe on an edge cloud, maybe they're just entirely distributed within your data centers, uh, or maybe not even in your data centers. Maybe they're distributed throughout your entire environment. This particular picture shows you just, you know, edge clouds, cloudlets, all of these devices. But point being, you've got a lot of data being gathered 
throughout your ecosystem. And now we have to worry about not just all that data that you put out in the cloud, maybe it's also distributed through your data centers, maybe it's distributed in your, um, throughout your entire environment. That's a management headache. Now we have to look at how on earth do we look at managing all of your data that we have pushed out into the cloud, but now we have to worry about all this proliferation of data that is now attached into sensors, that's attached into uh, edge devices, uh, and how are we going to go aggregate all of that information and find out how we pull all of that data together? So we've got large-scale data, and now we have extremely small-scale, but also extremely distributed data to also worry about. What else do we have? All right. Let's look at some co-locating uh, opportunities and some, some new technologies. Let's focus, circle back around to some of the fun, fun, cool new technologies that we've got going on in SNEA. So within SNEA, we've got some, some interesting things happening here. We've got some co-locating um, activities happening for accelerators, if you think about it. So first, there's some interesting work going on with our XPU solutions. So there's a lot of different flavors of XPUs. Um, XPUs can come in, a, this is way broader than GPUs, CPUs, IPUs, uh, smart NICs, uh, basically anything that is moving uh, the co-location of the processing closer to the data falls into this category. So this diagram is great, and there's some really good talks available. If you go out to SNEA.org and look on our ed, ED library, you will find some talks that talk about this. And SNEA is partnering with a couple of different organizations um, to work in to advance the uh, XPU uh, research and, and, and um, standardization here. And this is an area that we will be working also to advance uh, some manageability on, on the storage aspects. But as you can see here, there's just a ton of potentials here for um, different standardization just around XPUs, you know, virtual switches, uh, NICs, um, standardization around domain-specific acceleration and storage, in security, in compute, and memory subsystems, um, storage interfaces, uh, host interfaces, uh, uh, standardization, um, and developing basically uh, an XPU that's capable of providing, um, you know, NVMe over fabrics services uh, out of an XPU, or uh, you know, smart X services directly out of an XPU. That seems like that might have some management concerns out of it. How are you going to develop a management interface and integrate that with the rest of your environment? Moving on a little bit, more co-location, co -location. computational storage. You've been hearing about computational storage for several years now, also coming out of SNEA as we're developing our computational storage uh, APIs and, and architectures. Very similar premise, also moving the compute closer to the storage. Computational storage is all about embedding compute into the storage devices and embedding that uh, and optimizing that compute within the data path so that you can offload uh, this, this processing from the CPU down into the storage device for specific workloads. So. You sense a theme here in many of these, these uh, uh, technologies is really about co-locating that processing and optimizing the processing uh, for various workloads and specifically to ensure that you're right-sizing your environments uh, and not simply, you know, ensuring doing processing in one particular spot in your environment. Another uh, technology that's doing exactly the same thing is our data accelerator work. Uh, so data accelerators work in exactly the same way. 
So you're doing basically the same thing, you know, stable, concurrent, non-mediated, uh, standardized hardware data movement to move uh, the processing work into the right spot so that you can have move the data and the and the processing into uh, into optimized locations. All of these technologies lend themselves to uh, composable systems, um, development of composable systems, so that you're not you're developing bottleneck systems. You're allowing composable system development, um, and composable systems lend themselves to standardized management um, in the most uh, optimized way. Um, all of which is great, except it becomes a big management challenge. Moving on a little bit more here, we'll talk about again, and, and one of the other major areas again is storage fabric technologies. Once again, NVMe over fabrics. We've been talking about NVMe over fabrics for many, or NVMe, and then expanding into NVMe over fabrics for several years. It's not new but it's really starting to hit the market now. So we're starting to see NVMe over TCP, we're starting to see NVMe over, and over fiber channel, we're starting to see NVMe over RDMA. Three great technologies, great different applications for each one of those technologies. How do you bring those together into the same environment? How do you manage those consistently? Every vendor has uh, has a, management interface for that. Every vendor has a, uh, has a way to integrate those into their environment. If you want to bring multiples into your environment, how do you do that? Then of course, we have memory fabrics. We've had multiple iterations of different technologies for memory fabrics, and the latest of course is CXL. So CXL has some really awesome advantages for us, and again, just as we were just talking about with the accelerators, um, CXL actually helps enable those accelerators even further by providing some of that cash hook coherent disaggregation with the CXL uh, 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 pooling. Um, CXL fabric technologies allows us to actually provide connectivity and uh, enabling memory and accelerators uh, to be shared across systems. So now you have the capability to, again, provide that converged technology and that, that uh, connectivity so that you can right size your systems even more, even more readily. Now you've got the capability with, and the connectivity capability here for, with CXL for memory pooling, uh, memory disaggregation, so that now we can actually now, again, do memory-based storage connectivity. So there's a lot of new capabilities coming along here, each one bringing its own unique management challenges into the picture. Uh, so it's getting more and more complex because we want to try and bring every single one of these technologies into the same environment. On top of that, we have the management challenges. Um, we have dedicated fabrics expanding to shared fabrics. We have PCIe networks. We have Excel networks. We have fiber channel expanding to TCP and Ethernet all in the same environments and expanded range of security constraints and concerns in the same environment. A very complex environment for us to work with. In addition, there's even new ways for storage management uh, to come out as well. So one of the one of the more recent and everyone's favorite AI, are, are great buzzwords coming out or even hitting our storage management. So there's new fun challenges coming with, with AI storage management. Biggest one of these, most of these are single vendor solutions. Uh, some of the other issues are also 
uh, just adding fun challenges in dealing with storage management here. It's self, it's self proliferating. In other words, it creates more data to manage by generating data. So it's a, a you know, value proposition is it creating more data so that you have more data to manage with the solution. Um, too many other issues though are many of the solutions are are you know based requiring cloud connectivity so they're an issue for to even deploy for dark sites um the next one really kind of will help resolve itself though it's a new technology it's really poorly understood algorithms that one i think will get better over time but right now it's a little bit hard to to engage um the single vendor issue with this though is something that is going to be that's that's an area where we're not really dealing with it yet from a standards perspective um that's one we're definitely going to have to look at how can standards help with ai based storage management these are some really cool really interesting um algorithms some really nice value adds but in order to get past single vendor based solutions, we're going to have to look at how can we bring standards uh, standards into this ecosystem uh, to help get over that hump. So there are some of the technologies in there. Um, let's talk a little bit. And I've led talked I've been previewing this a little bit, but man, those all of those together really lead to a manageability headache. My, my diagram over here has kind of brought some of those together to help highlight that. We've got everything from, look at an environment, right? You've got an environment where you've got clouds, you, you may have um, a proprietary cloud service along with a standards-based cloud service in the same environment. You may have XPUs along with, and I say network Ethernet services, but your Ethernet services may be your actual, your, your, um, your actual network, but maybe you've got some iSCSI along in there too. Maybe you've got computational storage, uh, computational storage in there, as well as an NVMe um, over Ethernet environment. And I haven't even shown your block or your legacy. Maybe you've got some, you know, fiber channel environments in here. This can be a really complicated environment. So, how do you bring this stuff all together? That's a huge, some huge challenges in there. And there's a lot going on, right? Adding these additional virtualization really to, to build that custom configuration increases these management challenges exponentially. Workload management and optimization is different for each type of technology, device, vendor, sometimes even per version of the device. You wanna upgrade, you get a new version and if not, it doesn't really work very well for the, back, for the last one or it's a forklift upgrade. Okay, software version of a forklift, up, forklift upgrade, but you get my point. And the administrators are then being managed, asked to manage these, uh, and they're increasingly heterogeneous in, in devices, um, their network infrastructure, and they're, that's not what they what they understand. In some cases, these are DevOps people instead of specialized management domains. We in in the in the olden days, in the olden days, you had someone who did storage, someone who did networking, and these were siloed. We're not siloed anymore. You're getting folks who don't understand all of these domains and they're being increasingly asked to manage all of them. So, you know, their little heads explode. Once they, once they put a Band-Aid on that, though, they've got to come back and figure out how to solve the problem. So, how do we do that? Well, one of the keys really has to be standards-based management. It's more critical than ever to figure out how to successfully deploy, integrate, and manage these systems of storage at scale. So who's working on this stuff? Well, the good news is, you know, the vendors are working together on all of this, but we really need clients and, and end users to come back and help us identify the key critical use cases and help us with your demand to say, yes, we absolutely need this. Uh, put this in your products and help us solve these problems. Some of the key organizations helping to develop these underlying management standards, and I'll walk through what some of these look like in a minute, are DMTF with the base Redfish, which is helping to enable uh, the server 
a server base and base fabric management, um, SNIA, help, uh, pro, helping to develop Swordfish for storage management and store and uh, storage fabric management. NVM Express, which help which helps with the base instrumentation for the NVMe devices and the inbox um, uh, out of band management. Sounds a little counterintuitive there, but it provides the inbox out of band management for NVMe devices. Now we have several other organizations that are helping to develop open source uh, reference frameworks and uh, service-based orchestration and other open source tools like the Open Fabrics Alliance. Uh, as I mentioned, this is a piece of code I'm helping to develop as well as the Open Fabrics Management Framework. And then the SOTA Foundation is building a, 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 the SOTA work. I'll talk about that more. I'll talk about both of these more in a minute. What's well, called the um, the the uh, SOTA work is is a service service based foundation, uh, service based orchestration work. And then we have other groups that are also helping us refine the standards. So groups like the OCP. Uh, are looking at how they take the existing standards and basically help us create recipes. So how do you specify how to use the standards? Because the standards could be huge. Um, but say this is how, this is the pieces to implement for this use case. So that's what groups like OCP are doing. And then groups like CXL and UCIE are saying, yeah, go use this standard for management, um, and then when you're using this, this standard for management of our device, use it in this way. And they partner with groups like DMTF and SNEA to say, uh, we need these additional properties added for our new devices. So these, you know, these groups don't invent their own interfaces for manageability. They work with the organizations that already have the standards to extend them. So it's a it's a it's a very good partnership. Helps simplify the number of, of interfaces that are out there, and makes things like DMTF Redfish and Sneed Swordfish um, even more of a focal point uh, for for the industry. So what do these things look like? Let's take a look at Redfish as a basis first, right? So this is relatively straightforward structure. You have what's called a service route. And under service routes, you have tasks, you have you know, a set of resources. So you have the schemas, um, you have kind of the route here under registry one, everything sits under this task sessions, accounts, events, registries, and schemas sit under here. And then um, you have basically a split uh, under here where you have things that fall into the logical domain and the physical domain. So for a server, for example, you'd have things that sit under flash systems, that's a logical view, and then under the physical view, you'd have flash chassis. And then the out-of-band manageability would be over here under flash managers. So that's a kind of a hot, very, very simplistic view of, of the resource map for. And then this pattern will re repeat for other things. So um, that's, you know, for fabric, it would be slash fabrics, and then the physical thing would be a chassis. So this is a really high level view. So what Swordfish does is it extends Redfish. So this is a much more detailed view. I just brought a model in here of how you would map um, how both Swordfish extends Redfish, so you can see those same objects in here, but also how we would map, for example, an NVMe drive into a bunch of different objects within that same hierarchy. So you see that same service route up here, flash redfish slash v1, and that I just described how you split a logical view and a physical view. So in the logical view, you have slash storage. Boy, doesn't that just make sense? And our logical view in our physical view slash is slash chassis. And so we have under slash storage, you have the kind of storage objects you one would expect in a storage object. You have volumes and storage pools, and then controllers. And then under chassis, you ha we have uh, drives, a drive being a, just the physical representation of the physical object, aka the drive. So that's where we have a, a FRU or a field replaceable unit. Um, so those are just some of the basic objects in there. 
And then because this is an NVMe as opposed to a traditional drive, um, the you have things in here that where the NVMe version of a volume is called a namespace. So the volume in here, you you could see where we referred to it as the namespace. Um, and then our our NVMe has things that are logical controllers as opposed to physical controllers. So we've overloaded the model to refer to the logical controllers here. Um, and other than that, the model stays pretty much the same. So that's exactly how Shellfish works. And you've got a little NVMe primer in there too as well. Um, so that's Redfish and Swordfish. And um, also you've got a little primer on how we also work with NVMe in there. There's a bunch of other stuff in here. We're not gonna dig down too far into that today. Um, we've also talked about, hey, we, we work with some of these other organizations. There's fabric management in here as well. So we have fabric management with Redfish and Swordfish interfaces. Well, so that model is slash Redfish slash V1 slash fabrics. That base fabric is provided by Redfish, but a lot of the mapping there is actually done in Swordfish for Swords fabrics. And then um, also partnering with the Open Fabrics group to develop a reference implementation. So that work is done jointly really by three different groups. So you can see there's a lot of synergy working across the industry um, and working across different organizations to work to their strengths. Um, so a lot of different organizations, we don't, we don't work in silos, we work to our strengths. So Redfish provides a lot of the base and VMTF provide a lot of the base. Here's how to do things. SNIA provides the storage expertise. OFA brings in additional fabric expertise and they don't do standards per se. The OFA brings in expertise and works on reference implementation. And when they find things that are missing, they take it back to the other groups to help actually build the standards. So that's the, the three-way partnership there. So you can see the modeling here. We have fabrics and we have switches and zones and things you'd expect to see again in fabrics. And then you can see I put a little, a little cloud down here that says the Open Fabrics Management Framework. This is how it plugs in. We'll talk a little bit more about what that, fab, that framework looks like in, in a minute as well. So, um, that, that was kind of covered redfish and swordfish and what those models look like there. Those are all RESTful, REST-based um, frameworks, um, returning JSON objects, um, pretty standard REST-based interfaces there. As we go now over to, down into that, into that, next, that next piece, what does the OFMS look like? Well, it's a reference implementation. Um, and an architecture that defines how to do uh, composable resource management, connecting workloads. So it's not just a reference implementation of a framework, it's, it's also more intelligent, right? So it's a common set of network and resource configuration management and orchestration functions. Um, it uses the Redfish and Swordfish APIs at its top end uh, to connect to clients, and but it, it provides network services across all different types of networks uh, and provides network abstractions. So on the top end, you've got a Redfish interface, Redfish Swordfish interface. On the bottom end, you've got agent abstractions uh, down to different types of uh, network technologies, everything from CXL and Gen Z, those memory fabrics, to InfiniBand and OmniPath, to um, fiber channel and ethernet uh, to, you know, so basically across any kind of network. So this is where you get a lot of that expertise on actually ensuring that that modeling that's being done in DMTF and SNEA is actually complete and, and well thought out. Uh, in addition, there's work being done in this management layer and this code layer here 
to provide extra value add to clients. And this is all the work that's being done in open source. So you can see there's common fabric services here looking at monitoring aggregation um, and resource management across the fabric management um, and uh, looking at basically presenting fabric management um, and potentially some resource uh, monitoring and management as well. So the goal here really is basically enabling clients to access and manage and monitor the network manager, uh, the network resources uh, and the fabric resources in as agnostic a manner as possible. And to be able to allow people to add additional agents um, easily and extensively. Okay, so that was yet another layer. Well, I also mentioned SOTA as yet another open source project out here. Well, we have uh, one. SOTA is another orthogonal dimension. SOTA actually goes off and sits above and in, in a different dimension. SOTA goes off and adds a service-based uh, directive. So where uh, Redfish and Swordfish present traditional storage management and OFA is really taking advantage of that level, SOTA is actually looking at presenting a service-based interface. So this is a very large scale environment as that is looking at how can I present a, a service-based API um, and looking at quality of service and distributing, building a service-based interface here. So it's definitely much more storage-centric than um, fabric-centric, so much different um, uh, uh, ecosystem here. You can see what we have here with SODA is an environment looking at um, very large scale infrastructures. So we have support for block, file, and object, as well as large scale, both small and large scale storage pooling. Um, and support also support for uh, lots of different kinds of storage to plug in. Everything from support for cloud, um, Kubernetes and and uh, container-based storage, and then uh, Soda actually comes down and provides a QoS-based interface for partitioning and presenting that storage. So everything is microservice-based, and then the vendor the uh, backend is all vendor agnostic. So the application platform is agnostic, the back end is agnostic, and this whole ecosystem is developed to be, um, is developed as open source. The SOTA Foundation is a Linux Foundation project. So these are just a few of the, you know, kind of a few of the, of the pieces that are being developed um, that are all working together in terms of extending and providing requirements and um, enabling and building in the storage manageability space. For more information on all of these, you could always go to SNEA.org. Uh, the uh, SNEA.org slash swordfish will give you pointers to absolutely everything that is happening in the storage ecosystem space. and we would love to find ways for you to engage. We please join us and thank you for your attention.